Hi there, I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com and this is my smart American accent training. Welcome to our Saturday live question and answer class. We always have a topic in this class that we discuss at the beginning, but the majority of the class is spent answering your questions regarding American English pronunciation, American accent, whatever you're struggling with in your fluent English uh, communication, feel free to ask those questions here on YouTube in the chat and I'll answer them for you as we proceed. Uh, so at the beginning today, I wanted to continue our theme that we've been talking about, about sounds versus spelling. And today I wanna to look at some words that will teach us about a couple of different vowel sounds, how they're typically spelled, and some exceptions to the spelling. So of course, we have struggles with pronunciation in English due to our native language and the sounds that we know and are able to say, we also sometimes have issues that just arise because of the way things are spelled. So I want to make sure that we're um, able to identify some of these uh, challenges when it comes to that. So let's look at the words um, red and ready, read and read. And so we have the word red that's spelled with uh, the letters R-E-D. And this one follows the rules and the patterns for English where typically when we have letter E in a stressed syllable, it's gonna say the eh sound, which I call that the red tent vowel or vowel eh, just to help you understand and hear that eh sound and have a couple of anchor words. Um, this sound um, is also, um, it, it, so it's typically spelled with letter E. Um, and then we have the E sound. Uh, I call that one the green, green T vowel, just because uh, we typically spell that with E, 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 or E, A. So I do, a letter E can say E, like in me or we. Often though we have double vowels, E, E, or E, A, when we're talking about the E sound. So read uh, the plant, um, and read as in the present tense, uh, not past tense, present tense for read a book. These are reversed. So when I read a book, <laughs> I have the E vowel, um, present tense. Then I also have, I read a book. This one doesn't follow the rule. So typically if we see E, A, we would expect the E vowel. But in the past tense, I read that book yesterday we have a strange spelling and we change the pronunciation. So I don't change the spelling for read versus read, present tense versus past tense, but I do change the vowel from the E to the E. So that can be confusing. Um, we also then have the word ready, um, which uses the E vowel and this alternative EA spelling. So no wonder it's confusing, right? What can be helpful is to learn the common words that have the E eh sound versus the E sound, for example, to learn the most common spelling patterns, but then which ones are exceptions to the rules, and to learn the symbols so I can look in the dictionary and say, oh, um, ready has E eh, like red tent. Yes, and read has green T, the E vowel, because I can see that symbol. So the IPA, these symbols, International Phonetic Alphabet have one symbol for one sound versus spelling, letter E has a lot of jobs, right? <laughs> letter I has a lot of jobs. We only have five vowel letters, but we have 15 vowel sounds. And so um, a good way to recognize and learn those sounds is to learn the symbols that are in the dictionary that you use. In my videos and in the dictionaries I typically recommend, we have the IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet. Um, and so you can, um, you can learn these symbols and they will help you. These are also the symbols I use in my Sounds of English course and my other American accent courses on speechmodification.com. They can, Sounds of English can give you a strong foundation for every sound in English, how it's spelled, what words it's in, what accent error patterns you might have for it. So it's a great way to build a strong foundation to understand English sounds and to be able to pronounce them pronounce any word you want confidently and easily in American English. So I definitely check, re recommend checking that out. Again, that's our Sounds of English course on speechmodification.com. So you can ask questions about this topic or any topic. I see many of you here today with your questions, so feel free to put those in the chat. 
Um, if you're watching this on Facebook, jump over to the YouTube channel because that's where I see and follow the questions. And so you can ask your question and get that answered um, on our YouTube live class. Okay, welcome everybody. It's so nice to see so many of you here. Um, we have a question about um, the words motivated, motivate and motivated, and shrimp. <laughs> okay, so first, um, motivate. Um, motivate has first syllable stress, um, and the um, letter O, or the O sound in English is a diphthong O, so just hold that a little longer, you should have the correct sound. Um, so I'll write that here like mo. Then um, motivate, this first T, we use a flap. So it's gonna sound a little bit more like how we say the D in the middle of words, like middle <laughs> um, or better. Uh, if you think of it as a light D sound, you'll probably be saying it correctly. Mode. And then in the dictionary, you might see the I for the letter I here. I'm gonna write it as a uh with a schwa, mode, motivate, because we really want a reduced vowel there. Not a lot of length on it. Doesn't matter too much what the exact vowel is, just be unstressed and short, moda, motivate. Um, and then we have the A, um, we have our V and our A diphthong. And finally, for our final T, uh, I'll rewrite the A this way. Um, you might hear motivate with a T, uh, but we often use a stopped T at the end, motivate without releasing that T. And when we say motivated, then it becomes another flap. So then we have vaded. Motivate, motivated. Um, watch out for um, that you don't wanna be stressing the A in this word. I often will hear um, people will say um, motivate or educate rather than educate or motivate, probably because in motivation, we do stress the A. Words that have Asian, we tend to always stress that A syllable, Asian, communication, motivation, education. But then people sometimes take that pattern too far and they try to say uh, motivate. They hear that clear A and they wanna stress it. We do need the clear A, but we want our length and our clear vowel to be on the mo. Mo, motivate, motivate. So the vate is, is shorter in duration than the mo. Um, great word, uh, gave you a little more than you bargained for there maybe, but hopefully that helped answer whatever question you had about motivate. And then you also wanted to know about shrimp. Uh, so this is kind of an unusual um, combination, the sh and er sounds. What I would suggest in the word shrimp is to start with the r, because getting that r in place is gonna be most important. So um, we have the I sound. Um, you could even start with the word rim, then add your P, rimp, and then finally add your SH sound, shrimp. Um, if the sh is hard to do, um, know that you can pull the tongue back for the R, rimp, shrimp, um, and I don't have to change it too much to do that SH. Really, whenever there's an R in a word, um, the other sounds around the R have to accommodate because if I start with sh, and then I try to pull back shrimp, I might end up with kind of like shrimp. I don't want any sound between those, that sh and the er, shrimp. Um, yes, hopefully that answered your question about shrimp as well. Um, thank you, great questions today. Um, uh, we have some questions about writhe and ride, whale, well, and whale. Okay, so first, first writhe, and ride. Both of these have the just the R sound, so this W is silent. We have the R sound, and then we have the I diphthong. Um, letter I plus an E usually says the what we call long I or I diphthong. And then the difference here is the voiced TH, writhe, versus the D sound, ride. Um, so I do have a number of videos talking about V versus D at the beginning, middle, or ends of words. Um, after class, I'll come back and put some links in, in the comments and in the description for this video so you can go a little bit more in depth with some of these patterns. Again, you can also get help for these in our Sounds of English course on speech modification. But when we're talking about the V versus the D, there's two main differences. Number one, the tongue position. So when I'm saying writhe, 
My tongue needs to be between my teeth and the air needs to be flowing. So writhe, um, it's the same sound I have in the or that. You might find it easier to do the th at the beginning because you can set up the tongue. So you might try something like um, the word writhing. You might say thing. It's not quite like thing though, so that, that's a little misleading. But to, to build writhe, try thing, writhing, writhe, th. th. Or um, he, he uh, they writhe in, they writhe in pain, then. You might find it easier to do that TH if it's linked. Um, so two things, tongue between teeth, th, versus for D, ride, d, d, tongue is up behind the teeth against the roof of the mouth on the, on the um, uh, alveolar ridge, ride, d, d. Um, you can also put that together, ride in, that sounds kind of like ride in. Um, to put that D on the next word might make it easier to feel that D sound, din, ride in, ride in a car. Um, the D sound also stops, ride, d, d. I stop the air completely. If I just say it by itself, ride, ride, I might not even release that air. I just stop it. Versus writhe, the sound can continue, writhe, writhe in. So I, my air needs to be able to flow so that my sound can continue for that D. Again, I have a lot of videos helping with this voice TH and how it's different from the D. Um, so I'm thinking of... Um, I just recently made a video about bother versus butter, <laughs> um, though that might be a helpful one for you. And um, yeah, I can direct you to some more resources for that. But that's the main difference between those two. Um, that was a great one. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, I'm going to come back to, well, I'll briefly cover your second request. Um, as I get more requests coming in, I may only cover your first question. So I'll make sure that I get to everyone today. But um, you, your other question was quite good. You were asking about um, whale, well, and whale. So for this whale and this whale, these are the same. They both have the A diphthong, like in gray day. We just have two of the ways we tend to spell it. Uh, one way we spell A is with AI. We also spell it with an A plus an E at the end. Typically, our pattern in English is if we have the silent E at the end, it quote unquote makes the letter say its name. So this letter is called A. That's how we pronounce A, the diphthong. The other way we spell that is with AY, like in gray or day. Um, so whale and whale, um, you're going to want to make sure you just have that nice A sound. When we go to the L at the end, A L. It's a dark L. Sorry, my uh, pen is not working so well here. Um, we have to glide between the A and the U uh before the L. So you might think about thinking about it as having that Y sound, A Y L A Y L. Um, that tends to be helpful. Um, so thinking way, way Y L. I'll swap out this pen here. Um, uh, yeah, so that's true for both of those. And then when we get to well, L, L, there's not really much of a glide because even though we still have that dark L in well, L, um, I don't have a contrast that A, A, it has the higher sound, A, L, and we end up with that Y gliding before our schwa. In well, we just have the E eh sound. If you have trouble hearing the difference between whale and well, it's probably because your e eh is sounding more like an A, or you're using just an A for both of these. So make sure that your A is gliding and your E eh, eh doesn't glide. It's just this, the E eh sound like red. Another contrast that can help you with these, um, I do have a video about paper versus pepper. <laughs> that explains this technique of, I'm gonna use some other words to help me hear the difference between those vowels. So for example, trying say whale versus get well. These vowels are the same, these vowels are the same. When you hear say and get, you probably don't have any trouble between the vowels in those two words. Um, generally, you might be using a vowel that we don't have in English, this e, eh, the first part of the diplong a, 
for both of these vowels. In my Sounds of English course, I walk you through the A and the E, the contrasts, and also this error pattern of using E for both of them. That's a vowel that exists in many languages, but in English we only use that as part of the diphthong A or part of the diphthong air. Um, okay, so again, hopefully that wasn't too much information for your question, which is relatively simple, but the answer is complicated because there's a lot of reasons why those, those words might go wrong for you. Um, thanks very much for that request and that question. Okay, let's look at our next question. Um, we have a question about um, break out and break out in. Uh, so break out would be like to break out of a jail um, or to break out of a pattern. Um, so that implies you're in something, then you need to get out of it. To break out in um, is to um, like to break out in hives or to break out in a, a, a rash. Um, that's that's a combination that means to develop. Um, usually we use it with um, a skin condition or um, you could break out in laughter too. Um, it's something that erupts suddenly. So maybe an eruption or a development. Um, but it's used for specific things. So I would um, refer to like Google this or use a dictionary that shows you idioms. Most dictionaries will show you um, phrasal verb like if I if you search break in the dictionary or break out, it's going to show you examples of these. So that's a great reference for um, uh, these subtle differences because of course we use the same root verb with lots of different um, prepositions uh, for the phrasal verbs, and so it's helpful to um, have some resources so that you can um, you can see when you see it in a sentence, it tends to help you remember. Um, which is which and how to use them. I do also have a phrasal verbs playlist. Um, it's not too extensive, but I do cover um, quite a few um, quite a few there that might be helpful for you as well. Thank you for that question. Okay, we have a question about how to learn how to pronounce new words. Um, so what I'll say for that is again, um, being able to learn to read the symbols in the dictionary is helpful. When I'm learning something new, starting off on the right foot is good. Um, I also would recommend um, learning about some of the patterns for English spelling, and you can learn that in our Sounds of English course as well. If I get um, a good understanding of which vowel letters say which sounds generally in patterns, a lot of times as I'm learning new words, it'll apply in those cases. Um, but Typically learning the symbols for the sounds and how to combine those sounds is going to be your best bet when it comes to new words. Go to my website, speechmodification.com, and use the free practice area. You can type in the search box there, type dictionary, um, and it'll give you some resources about how to learn to use the dictionary for encountering any new word that you want, because um, definitely uh, I don't have videos for every single word on my channel, and um, some people are not always able to access YouTube. Um, so you can, when you have specific words that you wanna know about, always leave a request or a comment here. Generally about learning new words, the dictionary is a wonderful resource, particularly online dictionaries because they have a recording. You can listen and hear and imitate the words, and that tends to help you. The more you use it, the more useful of a tool it becomes. Um, so again, speechmodification.com, free practice area. Click, uh, type in dictionary, you'll see some lessons about learning to use the dictionary. Great question, thank you so much. Um, great, okay, we have a question about vulnerable, vernacular, and versatile. Um, so I'm gonna, after class, put a link there for um, my video for vulnerable. Um, vernacular I haven't covered before, so I'll cover that for you now. So vernacular, um, uh, we have second syllable stress, vernacular. Um, I would say probably correct pronunciation, you're gonna have the er, ver, um, and then your knack, ya, lur, vernacular, um, second syllable stress. So this letter A says the A sound, verna vernacular. Um, this U is one of our ones that has the gliding ya. 
um, it's a schwa. And then we'll again have another er vernac vernacular. Um, vernacular. Um, but probably some native speakers, maybe including me, <laughs> would say vernacular. It's not correct, but vernacular. We're, because this first er is unstressed and unimportant, it might be a place where we're a little lazy and we leave out that R. Um, to get to be accurate, do learn it vernacular. Um, to be fluent, if it's easier to do vernacular, people are not going to notice that mistake, I hope, because <laughs> uh, I think I make that. Um, the tricky part, I think, too, is just making sure that you recognize that this U is not, it's not uler, but you, y, yuler, vernacular. Um, and then you also asked about versatile, um, and that's a case where the ver is stressed, so you definitely need um, that er sound to be strong there. So you're going to see the stressed mark, the er, ver. This A, versa, is going to be a schwa. It's uh, unstressed and unimportant. And then, we, again, we have our rule about silent E makes the letter I say its name. So we have I diphthong there. So that would sound like versa, oops, sa, tile. Um, I'll probably just write tile that way. You could also think tie, ol, tile, um, if that's helpful for you. Versatile. Uh, so vernacular, vulnerable, versatile. Um, as I said, check back after class. I'll put a link for the video for vulnerable. There's a couple different correct ways to say that one. It's definitely a little bit on the challenging side. So I'll let you look at my longer video explaining the details of that one after class. Um, we have a question about cucumber. I believe I have a video for this one as well. Um, one cheat, you can say cuke, <laughs> um, which uh, some native speakers use as a, an abbreviation. That sounds like cuke. Um, so you start with the U and then add your Q and then your k U, Q, cuke. That Q is going to help you as well with this cucumber. We have first syllable stress. We have the Q. Cumber. So we start with our Q stress syllable. Again, just having that gliding U, the tense U, and then add the K, U, Q. Then the second C, U just says a schwa sound. Sounds like K or cum, cumber. And then we have our er sound, cucumber. Um, it's a good time for cucumbers here in the US, hot summer months. Um, thank you, that's a great word. Um, then we have a question about ant and ant or aunt. Um, so depending on where you are in the US, you'll hear different pronunciations for this. Many places in the US, including the West Coast where I live now and the Midwest where I'm from, we say ant the same way. We use the a vowel. Um, some places, East Coast, um, they tend to use more aunt, aunt, so they use the a uh, vowel there, aunt. Um, so basically, uh, the easy way is just learn ant for both of them. You will sometimes, though, hear people using the a uh, vowel. So that's like we have last, last ant, lost, Lost aunt. No, la, ah, uh, that's the wrong vowel. Um, not, not my aunt. Aunt. Ah. Uh. I guess they kind of use a something that's a little bit, it's not really aunt. It's really, it is maybe aunt. It's a little bit between the ah uh, uh, of la, lost, aunt, and the ah uh, of aunt. It's not super rounded. Um, ah. Uh. Yeah, I guess it's somewhere in this range. So the, the ah and the ah have merged in some places. And so if they're using aunt, they probably also have the ah, the cot, cot, the cot, cot merger, um, which you can learn more about in my video for that. Basically, simple answer, go with aunt for both. If you like the sound of aunt, you can use that as well. 
it's kind of a nasalized, slightly rounded ah. Um, okay. Um, next question. Um, oh, hose and horse. So for hose, these two word, the words look similar, but they're not really pronounced very similarly. For hose, we have the O vowel like in no. So there's an O diphthong there. And letter S says Z. So hose, I would think about that like, um, maybe just write it, rewrite it with a Z, uh, a Z-E, and making sure your O is long enough. In whore, horse, we have the or uh, diphthong. So build from or and then add your H, horse, and then S-E says the S sound here. So this is the same as this word, horse. My voice is horse and I rode a horse. Um, the important thing is making sure you have the strong American R there, or. So I would do or, horse. Um, maybe rewrite that as two S's um, versus the Z. Um, S-E can say Z or S. It often does say Z like in hose. Horse is an exception. Um, of course, it can do both. Like we have use um, the verb and use the noun, the use of words to use the word. Um, this one has the S and this one has the Z sound. Again, being able to look in the dictionary in the symbols, I'm gonna see a Z when I have a Z sound. I'm gonna see an S when I have the S sound. I'll also see um, OR versus O, the diphthong O. So that's all useful for the um, person who was asking about new words. Hose and horse might not be new words for you, but learning about that in words you already know the pronunciation of can help you with words that you don't yet know the pronunciation of. Um, great question. Thanks so much. Um, okay, we have a question about the word ankle. Um, so what we have here in ankle is that the letter N says says the ng sound and not the n sound. So when I have, for example, an ankle, an, I have the N sound with my tongue lifting, ang, ankle, it's more like the same sound as in rang, like rang the bell. So for ankle, you'll see first syllable stress, the a vowel, the ng sound, the k, and then the o. Um, dark L here. So my video for syllabic L will help you with O, ankle, kul. If there's any sound in there, it's a little light schwa sound. So thinking about it like ang, you, I would write kul, but maybe think this, kul, because you don't want a, you don't want kul, you don't want a lot of vowel there. You want to just move quickly from the k to the o. Um, that dark L is challenging for a lot of people. Um, but ang ankle. Um, yeah, so he rang about his ankle, um, an ankle if you need to fill the n and g contrast. Um, great word, thank you for that question. Okay, um, we have a question about the word wood louse. Um, so our word wood has the uh vowel, um, a compound word like, uh, it doesn't have an O, it has an O. A compound word like wood, wood louse. Um, we have these as two word phrases and then also words where it's uh, two nouns together making a new noun, a compound noun. They, we always stress the first one and have some light stress on the second one. So the difference being, if I'm saying wooden, wooden, that second syllable is very short and unstressed, and my length and clear vowel are on wood, but on wood, louse, I have a clear vowel in both, some length on both. I just don't want wood, louse, not too um, even across, I, do, I still want more stress on wood, wood, louse. So there was a wood, louse um, in the house, or wood um, in the woods. Um, so you'll see secondary stress potentially if you look in the dictionary. Laos, ow, it has the ow diphthong. And then here's another S-C that says S. So I would rewrite that maybe as this kind of wood, <laughs> if that helps you, it doesn't have an L though. Um, neither does this wood, wood, um, Laos. Um, I would maybe write ow, s, Laos, wood Laos. 
Um, just different ways of looking at the same sounds, how they're spelled in other words, to change whatever pattern I have stored there. If I if I um, have a mispronunciation stored, or if I'm just not sure about interpreting it, using a word that you're familiar with to help you with the vowel, as well as starting to learn the symbols for the sounds can be really helpful. Um, yeah, that's an unusual word, but um, demonstrates some interesting points. So thank you for that question. Okay, my board is getting dirty here. Um, that means we had a lot of good, good questions today. Thanks so much. Uh, we'll just go a little bit more. We're running a little long today, but um, I'm happy to see so many of your questions. I want to be able to answer as many as I can. Um, and um, thank you for being a part of class today. I am li uh, live every Saturday for this live question and answer. We also have our daily word of the day um, videos each day where I've been covering your requests. So do leave your requests and comments. If you're watching this not live, you can leave a comment and I do go through those, give you resources, uh, send you to other videos I've made or other information. Or if I haven't covered your word yet, I'll add it to my list to cover in a future class. I am um, many months behind between when you requested and when your video will come out just because there's been so many great requests. So I have hundreds to go through. Those of you who, um, you also have the option to join as a channel member, and then I will make your video each week with your requests. So that's something to consider as a way to support speech modification and to get a faster turnaround on your requests. Um, you can click the join button on this video or any of my videos to read a little bit more about the other membership perks. But that's one way um, we have an extra live class for channel members and also um, their requests can get uh, turned around very fast. So if you're in a hurry <laughs> for an answer um, and you'd like to support speech modification, that's a great way to do so. It's also a wonderful support to me when you like, share, comment. It just shows YouTube that this content is interesting to you. Um, and of course, subscribing is another great way to support the channel, um, helping us grow and reach more people uh, to be able to bring you the answers you're looking for. So thanks for being here and for all of your support. I, I do really appreciate it very much. Um, thank you. Okay, um, we have a question. Oh, speaking of channel members, um, from Hector. Um, Hector, thanks so much for being a channel member and for um, your purchase of our Sounds of English course, or I mean our American Accent, Accent six-week course. Um, Wolf was something that um, you had asked about and I didn't have a specific video for, so I'm glad you're here live today. Um, so in Wolf, we have our uh, oh, we have our uh, uh vowel, like we just had in the word wood. So the first thing is when you're saying wood, or when you're trying to say wolf, you might find it helpful to say wood first to get that uh shape, that uh vowel. You can also, in our Sounds of English course, look at our uh video for good book um, and kind of learn more specifics about that vowel. Then when I put it together with the L, wolf, wolf, um, it's, it's, Another thing that can help is this word wool, um, because the word wool, the word wolf is like wool plus an F. So in the dictionary, you're going to see this, uh, when you're pr trying to practice it, wolf, wolf, um, it's, it's basically how we have that dark L sound. So thinking about it like, oh, have rounded lips and then that the back of the tongue stays down. Oh, oh, the front of my tongue lifts up and touches. And then I finish with my F, wolf. Um, another strategy that might help is using a word like, like I said before, wood, wood, the wool, wolf. You can feel that in the U uh of wood. Um, I'm in one position in wool, wolf. I'm dropping my tongue a little bit for that uh sound. So would the wolf um, be coming? Wool, oh. Um, so it's kind of like I'm going uh, oh, or uh, uh, oh, oh, wolf. <laughs> it's really tough. It's actually a very difficult word. So thank you so much for bringing it up because I think a lot of people probably struggle with it. You're starting in the shape with the uh, and then I'm having the uh, the back of the tongue dropping for my schwa and my front of my tongue lifting for the L, wolf. 
Um, but there's not really any in, in additional gliding sound in there. So it's really one vowel. It's just kind of a, a combination vowel there. Definitely an unusual pattern um, and challenging. Um, good. And hopefully you saw my other videos um, for fuel and um, the owl, uh, fowl that you were looking for as well. Let's just talk about fowl as well. Um, my video for owl can help you. So this fowl, like fowl weather, and this fowl, like birds, that's the same. And we're starting with that ow diphthong. So that one starts more open and then closes to more rounded, like the uh of wolf. So saying ow, fowl, and then finally fowl. This is a place where thinking of it as having two syllables, fowl, Oh, oh, can help you foul. Um, yeah, and then for fuel, um, as you may have already seen, we have our U. So we would do U, O. That linking, you're going to have the W in between the U and the U, U, O, O, and then add your F, fuel. Um, yeah, so nice to um, see you here in class today, Hector. Uh, thanks so much for your support and being a channel member. I do really appreciate it, and hopefully that covered the specific words you were looking at, and then the other video uh, links I sent you will help you with those overall patterns with the dark L, gliding from vowels into the dark L. Um, great, wonderful, I'm glad you're here. Um, we have a question about warrior versus voyeur. Um, so I do have a video for warrior versus worrier. <laughs> um, I'll put that in the link after class. And when we're looking at warrior versus voyeur, um, slightly different differences. Um, Got to spell voyeur correctly. Voyeur. So warrior has first syllable stress and voyeur has second syllable stress. So that's one difference. We also have the w versus v sounds. This one has the rounded sound. So if I think about the the w as being w w, making sure that I start with rounded lips, w versus the v, I want the same tongue position or the same lip position as I have for the f sound. V, this v and f sound, those can continue. The w basically just does its quick glide and moves on to the next sound. You can check out my video for W versus V to help you with this as well. Then in war, warrior, I also have the phenomenon of letters AR, say the OR sound. So it's just like the word war. Um, make sure you have the rounding there. War, E, ER, war, ear, um, long, short, short. And then in voyeur, we have the, again, we have an OI diphthong here, um, like in uh, like in boy, so thinking about trying voy by itself. And you might want to build this word from the back, yer, voyeur. So the yer is just like um, the er sound with a y sound, and it's longer, voyeur. So voyeur and warrior. Three syllables, two syllables. A lot of differences, but I hear the similarity that might make it confusing between these two. You may have an issue with the W and V. You may have an issue with the syllable stress, um, but knowing that they have a different number of syllables, different sounds, and, and different stress patterns, hopefully that helped you. Um, a lot of different details you might need to work on there depending on what's challenging for you, but um, I have resources for all of those different things, so do check those out. Um, great, really excellent question. Thank you so much. I That was a fun one. Um, okay, a couple more and then we'll need to wrap up for today. Um, we have a question about um, the word words disastrously and acumen and their stresses. Okay, so for disastrously, we have second syllable stress. Disaster. So disastrous or disastrously, second syllable stress, disastrously, um, short, long, short, short. And then acumen, first syllable stress, long, short, short. 
acumen disastrously. Uh, hope if that's all you wanted to know, I won't break down the words even more in more detail, but um, for z disastrously, start on the zas and it'll help you. And this is a Z, disastrously, disastrously. For acumen, just short on, long on the a, ah, short on the cumin. Um, here's our another U that's a, um, it's probably actually gonna be kya, akya, acumen, or maybe a little bit of a U, acumen. But um, because it's stressed here, we do, even if it has a clear U, we tend to do a ya, reduce that a little bit because it's in an unstressed syllable. Um, tough words, both of those, thank you. Okay. Um, and um, question for the word bulb, um, ball, we have a schwa here. So it's gonna be very similar how it looks in the dictionary. Um, I would build this from that dark L. So trying all, keep the uh, all, the tongue central, then drop it a little and lift the front of the tongue for the L. All, ball, bulb. Make sure you don't do bull, not an uh sound, but an uh sound. Think of it as a schwa. All, ball, bulb. Yeah, it's not an easy, it's not an easy sound. Basically that dark L, um, any word that's in can make it a little bit tricky. And then also knowing that that U is a schwa in bulb um, is gonna be helpful. We have a question about, would it be okay, sound okay, if I pronounce the word sugar using the uh vowel instead of, in the stress syllable instead of the uh? Yeah, so sh, sh, gur, um, this is an S. So the word sugar, sugar. Um, it's not gonna sound too bad if you use an uh there, sugar just as long as you're not too long on it, sugar. I, I would say try to go the sh, sugar, um, because shug, sugar sounds a little bit more like what we would have in a word like shudder. Um, so yeah, it is it is different, sugar, sugar, shudder. Um, if it were in the unstressed syllable, it wouldn't matter as much, but this is the uh syllables where we hold it longer. One thing to think about is that the SH sh is already rounded like the uh sound. So if you just keep the mouth shape you have for the SH, sugar, um, that, that you're, you're gonna naturally get closer to this uh sound and get it correct. Um, if I have to do sh, sh, I have to change my mouth shape, sh, sugar. Um, it's the same as we have in a word like should. I often use the SH to help people get that uh vowel because it helps bring the lips forward into the rounded position I need for the uh, sh, sugar. Um, yeah, so I wouldn't really recommend trying to substitute the uh if you can help it. Um, but that's a that was a great question. Thank you very much. Okay, um, we have a question about um, reading a book. Um, uh, the the question is, um, or the comment is, um, that it's hard to know the plot or the story, the meaning of the words, if you're focusing on pronunciation. Um, and basically what I would recommend is um, doing reading separately. So read for pronunciation and focus on that. Read for content and meaning and focus on that. It's going to be too difficult to do both at once. Um, reading it silently to yourself and focusing on the meaning first may help you when you go to do the pronunciation reading and reading that out loud. Um, as we're reading something, um, our brain is doing many things at once, right? It has to focus on the meaning, the pronunciation, um, the rhythm of the sentences. We can't do all those things at once. So if you're trying to both learn the meaning of what you're reading and work on your pronunciation, you're going to need to read it multiple times to be able to do both. Um, as you get better with um, reading for understanding. You can probably read for pronunciation and, and still understand what you're reading, but if you can't do both at the same time, um, just separate that out and decide which thing you're working on and which time. Um, yeah, that's, that's true even for people um, who are um, fluent in a language that um, reading aloud, they might, they might be more focused on 
how to say everything and paying a little bit less attention to the content. I know, for example, um, when I read aloud, um, I, I can read aloud. I can read something aloud and be thinking about something else, uh, in which case I'm just doing enough to focus on pronouncing the words correctly and I'm not thinking about the content. Um, if I'm thinking about the content and the pronunciation, I don't have to think as much about pronunciation, but I'm, I'm thinking more about the meaning and expressing it. So um, separate those out and work on them separately is my, my suggestion and my advice. Um, okay, great. Um, one more question, a couple more. Um, we are going a little bit long today, but I really like your question, so I'm gonna go and keep going for you. Um, we have the word bald, this request, all. I would build this from the word all, thinking about that as having kind of the ah vowel, ah, all. Um, again, kind of ah, all, all. Um, I don't need a lot of length here, but basically, um, the all, all, you're going to have a rounded vowel and your dark L and then ball and finally bald, bald. Um, this bald is the same as bald, like I cried tears. The bald man bald when he heard something happened. Um, not easy, but, um, my, uh, online courses can help you with that uh, dark L as well as I have a number of videos. I know I have one about tall, all, some other words with that um, that ah and dark L combination. So after class, I'll put some links in to where you can find resources on my courses and also here on YouTube in our videos. Um, thank you for that question. Um, okay. Um, we have a question about the difference in the vowels eh and a ah when they're followed by R like Mary and Mary. Um, so you will see in the dictionary that um, they may make this Mary like that and this Mary like that. Uh, I do have a video about Mary and Mary and also this Mary. <laughs> um, some people say all of them the same. I usually write it with the air, uh, sorry, the air diphthong. Um, and I like to write that this way because it helps me think of that tense A, which I think we typically use in the air sound. A lot of dictionaries will write this this way. So if they're saying um, the word mare, for example, and this Mary, they might write it with, with this. And then they would write ma, Mary, like this one, or maybe this one with that. Mary, I would say, that tends to be more Boston, New York, where they use that ah sound, Larry, Mary. Much of the rest of the country uses air, Mary, and does all three of these the same. Depending on where you are, this is definitely different for regional dialects. If you're a non-native speaker, I think the simplest way is to go with air in all of them. Um, I'm gonna marry Mary and tell her Merry Christmas. All the same for me. These two, Mary and Mary, Mary, <laughs> they might, you might hear it some places with that ah sound. Some places that's gonna sound strange. And generally, um, building from air is my recommendation. Um, depending on where you are, you can also listen to how people say them. And if they say, tend to say Mary, you can use a little bit more of an ah sound in them. But generally speaking, I use air for all of them. Um, like you would see in the words hair or mare, the um, uh, female horse. Okay, um, great question. Again, I do have a video about that um, that goes into more detail, and I can include the link for that in the description for this video um, after the video is finished processing. Um, okay, uh, we had a question about ankle and uncle. So we did ankle had the a, ah, uncle has schwa. So if I, um, if I hang by my ankles, um, and then uh, my uncle hung by his ankles, we have the uh sound. So also thinking about like some uncles and that ankle. Um, that's a contrast between the ah and the uh in those two words. Okay, 
Um, thank you, everyone. This was a great class today, a little bit longer than usual, but worth the time um, because of all the great questions that came up. Do come back next week on Saturday. We'll have another live class. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, each day we have a new uh, word of the day class. Um, check out on the channel page. You can go to our um, community page and see what's coming up. You can also look at our playlists and get a little more help in depth for different, uh, different things. On our website, speechmodification.com, we have many, many free practice areas and a search box where you can look for help for specific topics as well as our online courses on our courses page. They're all either free or available for under $2 um, so that they're a really great resource for you, inexpensive and accessible to help you build your skills. Um, keep those requests, likes, shares, and comments coming. Do check into subscribing or joining the channel to support us as well if you're interested. Um, and thank you for a wonderful class today. I look forward to seeing you in tomorrow's word of the day as well as next week, next Saturday in our live question and answer class. I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com. Remember, if you want to sound like a native speaker, you can do it. Speechmodification.com. Bye, everyone. Thanks for a great class.